In this video, I want to answer the question, what is a Monte Carlo simulation? The Monte Carlo technique takes its name from the gambling tables of Monte Carlo and its casinos. It's widely used throughout science, but as project managers, we most often use it to assess the risk to our schedule and sometimes to our budget. In this video, I'm going to speak as if we're talking about schedule variation and the risk to our schedule, but the principles are exactly the same when we're thinking about risk to budget. And we start by taking each activity and estimating the range of possible durations and the range of probabilities for each. This means that for each activity, we need to define a probability distribution giving the range of possible schedule variances from the principal estimate. To clarify, if each possible task can have a range of possible durations, each with a different likelihood, then we describe those possible durations and their likelihoods as a distribution, and we often represent it as a distribution function. It's easiest to see this distribution function as a graph, and the most common form of distribution function used in project management is what mathematicians refer to as the beta function, and it looks something like this. What this tells us is the most likely schedule variances cluster around the predicted schedule. There are a small range of variances that mean that the task will come in before its planned schedule date. And there are a wider range of variances extending well beyond our expected or planned schedule date. However, there are many possible distributions we can use and in the real world, each different type of activity will probably have its own type of distribution. The PERT methodology assumes at its core a beta function distribution. However, it simplifies it to three points to give us a triangular distribution that looks like this. The simplest distributions are either a symmetrical triangular distribution, which kind of suggests that a delay of a number of days is equally likely to finishing early by the same number of days, or a square or rectangular distribution, which says that any level of delay or advance is equally likely up until the point where it just won't or can't happen. And a distribution doesn't have to have just one peak, it can have multiple peaks. A discrete distribution says that we could be delayed, for example, by two days or three days, but not by two and a half or three and a half or even one and a half or one day. And sometimes activities are genuinely like this, that certain levels of delay or early performance are just not possible given the nature of the task. But projects have many tasks or activities. And what the Monte Carlo method does is it uses significant computing power to calculate a random choice for each activity of its duration, and then to repeat, taking another random choice. And for each activity, what duration the system takes is dictated by the likelihood of that duration. And so by repeating again and again and again, each simulated project will have a wide range of different durations for each of its tasks, but that will give a probability distribution for the final end date of the project. The Monte Carlo method is highly mathematical and scientific, but the computing of it for us now using the tools is the simple part. The hard part, of course, 
is making sensible estimates of the distributions and indeed of the primary schedule estimates for each of very many activities. And this is a hugely challenging task. And errors in this will, of course, lead to errors in the final predictions of the Monte Carlo method. Another shortcoming of the Monte Carlo method, of course, is that it assumes that each activity is discrete and independent of all others. If activity A is delayed by three days, then the Monte Carlo method does not assume any particular delay to activity B that follows from it. It will still vary according to its random distribution. In the real world, of course, we know that some activities are linked to common factors and that therefore a delay in activity A means a necessary equivalent delay in activity B and maybe C, D and E. Monte Carlo simulations are useful in certain very limited situations. But as with all risk analysis, what really matters is the thought and the assessment that goes into it. Putting a set of numbers into a computer program gives us the appearance of precision and rigor. But in reality, we only get the precision and rigor we deserve from the work we put in. Very few project managers will need to use Monte Carlo simulations during the course of their career. But it is an important idea, and therefore all project managers who are serious, particularly those who take risk management seriously, need to know what it is and to understand the basics as I've laid them out so that you can make an informed choice about whether Monte Carlo simulation is worth the time and the effort for your project and whether it will genuinely give you a more robust assessment of the risks that your project faces. Please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. I'll be creating loads more great project management content, so please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.